Hogwarts Castle, a 5 inch gauge locomotive, profiling the brake blocks and brake beams plus a small amount of painting. First of all I need to remove some paint. As usual to do this I'm using some cellulose thinners, or lacquer thinner as it's known in the USA, to remove the paint from the specially shaped nuts that hold the side rods in place on the crank pins. There are four of these that need the paint removing from them. Here they are, and as you can see they're a special shape, they're not just ordinary nuts. These are great western type crank pin nuts. While the cellulose thinners dissolves the paint from the nuts, it's time to look at the brake blocks. Here's one of them, there are six in total, and I need to profile the inside edge of the brake block so it becomes a better fit against the wheel tread. I need to shape the inside edge of the brake block to allow for the wheel flange. And the easiest way to do this is on the edge of the belt sander. Even though the drum on the edge of the belt sander is not the same diameter as the wheels, it doesn't matter. By careful manipulation of the brake block against the sander, I can easily obtain the correct shape. The radius of the brake block matches the diameter of the wheel perfectly. It's just this inside edge that needs trimming on all six brake blocks just to match the angle of the wheel flanges. After the sanding job, it now fits perfectly. The edge of the brake block is level with the edge of the wheel. This is an aerosol can full of Phoenix Precision Paints grey single pack etch primer. I'm spraying some of this into the cap because I want to brush it on initially. Why am I brushing it on? Well I really don't know, I could have sprayed them, but I want to make sure that the etching primer When I paint them black, I probably will spray them because it's quicker and you get a better finish. But here I'm applying the etch primer using a paintbrush. Recently a viewer asked me why did I use such a small paintbrush on relatively large areas? And the answer is quite simple. A small paintbrush leaves scale sized brush marks, very small, very thin brush marks. A larger paintbrush is more likely to cause the paint to run, and a larger paintbrush, particularly on castings, leaves much larger brush marks. There are six of these to do, I'm only going to show three, and the process is identical for every one of them. And yes, this one is successful, it fits the wheel perfectly. I suppose I could have left them as they were, because over time, because the brake blocks are dummies and made out of brass, if they did contact the wheel, then they would be worn down automatically. But I prefer to do it this way, because I don't want any contact between the brake blocks and the wheels. On this engine, the braking system is going to be a dummy one. Most miniature steam locomotives do have fully working brake systems and they're only any good for stopping the locomotive from moving when raising steam. But if you put the locomotive in mid-gear and put the tender brakes on, it won't move anyway. The next part of this episode covers reprofiling the brake beams. If you watch the episode in this series when I machined the brake beams, you'll see why they are this shape. These curious square-shaped protrusions were to make it so I could hold them near the edge of the four jaw chuck. Because the beams taper, it would have been quite a difficult job to get them secure in the four jaw chuck's jaws. Personally, I found the machining of these to be very fiddly, and the ends of them are not fully round because the holes in the brake hangers are a little bit on the large side. It would have been better in this case if the brake beams were made from a thicker material, but this should look okay when it's all fitted together. If I was a proper engineer, I would probably have removed these pieces of metal by putting them in the milling machine and milling them off, but I'm not a proper engineer, I'm a musician, so I do it up against the one-inch belt sander. With a bit of care and attention, it seems to work. Now I'm roughing up the piece of steel because I am going to paint it once again with etch primer, so I need to score all the surface to make sure that the paint sticks to it. If you don't do this and just use the piece of steel as it is, then it will be fine, you'll paint it and it'll look good, but the paint will not be very well keyed to it and the slightest knock will remove a large flake of paint. So be warned, always score the surface of metal before you paint it. And yes, I know I'm going to be using etch primer and etch primer is supposed to acid etch its way into the metal, which it does, but the acid in the etch primer etches the metal much better if you key it first. It gives a larger surface area for the acid to attack the metal. This is the second brake beam and once again using some fairly coarse emery cloth I'm giving it a good going over to scratch the surface. Here are three brake beams, more or less ready for painting but I have to drill some holes in them first. I'll do that in the next episode. And that's it for this one, short and sweet. Here's the paint drying on the brake blocks.
There are three more to do before the job is finished. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.